Oh, son, you better buckle up today. We're going for a ride. You remember in John 8 where we find a woman caught in adultery? This is where we see the Pharisees trying to trap Jesus. So they bring to him this woman who was caught in the act of adultery. And then they waste no time in reminding Jesus. Now, you know, Jesus, the law of Moses says we stone in her to death. And to be completely honest with you, they're right. They are within their full legal right to stone this woman to death. She broke the law. Now already you could tell what type of people we're dealing with here. Did they bring the man to be stoned too? Nope. Jerks. It takes two to tango, boys. What I'm trying to get you to see here, this was a setup. This was straight up a malicious attack on Jesus to catch him in a vulnerable position. If he says, no, don't stone her and saves her life, now Jesus has just broken the law. And if he agrees with the law and lets them stone her to death, his entire ministry and message of love would just be thrown out the window. It would seem like this is a brilliant trap with no way out. Or is there? Now pay attention to what happens next. It then says that Jesus stooped down and began writing in the dirt with his finger. You'll need to remember that. And while he's writing, they keep pressing him for an answer. So Jesus stands up and says, whichever of you is without sin, you can throw the first stone. Oh, savage Jesus. And then he stoops back down and starts writing again. And it's at this point that the men start dropping their rocks one by one and walking away. Oldest to youngest. Now we've got Bible scholars, pastors, preachers, teachers, everyone has a theory or idea of what Jesus was writing that made them walk away. Some people believe he wrote the name of each man and then their sins next to him. Brutal. Some people believe he was writing, where is the man? And yet there are others who believe he was writing the Ten Commandments. Now, I personally do agree with one of these theories, and I'll show you why using scripture. But really what I want you to do today is change your perception of what he was writing to why he was writing it. Oh, this will bring freedom to your life today, if you let it. So, what do I think he was writing in the dirt? The Ten Commandments. But let me show you why I think that. Do you remember in Exodus 31 when Moses was getting the Ten Commandments? Verse 18 says, When the Lord finished speaking with Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two stone tablets inscribed with the terms of the covenant written by the finger of God. Oh, son, did you catch that? Remember when it said Jesus wrote in the dirt with his finger? And how were the Ten Commandments written? With the finger of God? Oh, come on. Okay, okay, okay. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, Kelly, this is God writing the tablets, not Jesus. Okay, okay, okay. I hear what you're saying. But we need to remember, our God is a three-part being. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All different and unique, yet all the same. Is it really a stretch to say Jesus was the part of God talking with Moses on the mountain? Thus, Jesus being the one who wrote the tablets? Maybe, but maybe not. Again, remember, I said it's about the why, not the what. Whether you want to believe it was God the Father or God the Son who wrote the Ten Commandments, it won't change the end result. So here's the mind shift I want to show you. Why was Jesus writing the Ten Commandments in the dirt? Because he was trying to show the Pharisees and everybody else there and us today that the law of Moses, that they were so concerned with fulfilling even to the point of this lady's death, it came from him. He was trying to tell them, I am Yahweh. I am God in the flesh. I wrote the law that you have turned into a God. He was trying to show them the law that you guys are so focused on fulfilling is actually standing here before you right now. And you've missed it. And so many Christians today have missed the purpose of the law. You see, none of the men standing there accusing this woman had been able to fulfill the law 100% to completion because it is impossible to do. So Jesus was showing them, you're just as guilty as her. The entire point of the law was to show us all. We're a mess. We need help. And Jesus is that help. The law was never intended to be the way to God. Jesus is the only way. No matter how good you are at following the rules, you'll never be good enough. It's not about getting all the rules down and never messing up. It's about coming to Jesus when you 
do mess up because you will time and time again. Whether you're saved or not, you're still going to sin. This is why Jesus said, whoever has no sin among you, cast the first stone. Oh, and this is so good because there was one man there who could have thrown as many stones as he wanted to. Jesus. Jesus had full right to stone this woman. He had never sinned. He had done what you and I could never do. He followed the law to completion. But what does Jesus do? Do. He looks at her and he says, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? To which she replies, no, Lord, not even one. And then right here, right here, you see Jesus speak some of the most incredible words in the history of all the world. Neither do I. Wow. Are you kidding me? Jesus, who was well within his right to punish this woman for her mistake, to make her feel awful, condemned, full of shame for what she's done, even kill her. But instead, he says, I don't condemn you either. You see, John 3, 17 says, For God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You see, for those people who love to look at your life and tell you how much you've missed it and constantly reminding you that you're a sinner by using Jesus didn't abolish the law, they've missed it. Of course Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. The law is vital. It shows us that we need Jesus. But the best part of all that they seem to leave out when condemning you and me is that Jesus, who could condemn us, chooses not to. And if Jesus didn't come to this earth to condemn us, what makes you think it's your job? And then I love the last thing that Jesus says to this woman, go and sin no more. Now, at first glance, it can seem like Jesus just gave her an impossible task, but not if you have the understanding that Jesus chooses not to condemn you when you do sin. You see, what Jesus is telling us is that our goal in life should be to go and sin no more. We should be doing everything we can to avoid sin at all costs. However, when you do make a mistake, because you will, don't let it ruin your day or your week or even your life as so many of us are in the habit of doing. Instead, remember, Jesus didn't come to condemn you for your mistakes. He loves you. He truly cares about you. He doesn't want you living in guilt or shame for your mistakes because he's already paid for them. You see, my friends, the greatest truth in all the world is this. Jesus didn't come to condemn you for your sins. He came to make a way for you to reach the Father in spite of them. And think about that for a minute. Hey, if this message blessed and encouraged you today, please check out my brand new book. It just came out. It's a 40-day devotional called Think About That for a Minute, Volume 2. Matter of fact, the study we just did came straight out of this book. Every single day for 40 days, we take a scripture, break it down, apply it to our life. There's a prayer for the day and then space for you to write down what God is speaking to you. Look, this is an excellent tool and resource to come alongside your Bible reading. It shouldn't take place of it. And if you want to go even deeper, there's an official study guide that goes with it. It gives you eight to 10 questions every day that just help you draw as much out of the text as you can to truly help you in your walk with God. Look, these books have been a blessing to so many people. It'll be a blessing to you. You can go read the comments on any of my videos. You can get it today at kellykministries.com or if you want it cheaper, faster, free shipping, go grab them on Amazon. Either way, get it today. And you know, think about that for a minute.